In base, it's only possible chemically to hydrolyze an ester. Let's orientate ourselves. There's our starting material. And over here is the acid and a final product from that acid. So that's where we're heading. This is the hydrolysis direction. And the alcohol, HOR primed, has become taken out of the ester during that process. The concepts of basicity and nuclear felicity go hand in hand. So things which are basic are often typically nucleophilic. It's the hydroxide iron, which is the, the base which is being used. And it's a very simple type of base, so it is also a nucleophile. So the first thing to recognize when you look at the start of this mechanism is that it is the nuclear felicity of the hydroxide iron that is starting the process off. This time, the nucleophile is an anion. With nucleophiles, if you see them as anions, then they're likely to be more reactive than something which is similar, but which is neutral. So when you see that hydroxide anion and think in terms of nuclear felicity, you should be thinking relatively powerful nucleophile. So no need this time to worry about activating the electrophile. The nucleophile attacks into the electrophilic center and the pi bond breaks. A new sigma bond is formed in that process. Of course, the charge auditing is different because we have an anion. So we have anion and neutral, so something in this intermediate must be negatively charged. Any doubt about that, you can follow the arrows to find out where the negative charge should be. So let's just try that out. Here's the negative charge, a pair of electrons forming the carbon-oxygen bond. Coming in, the pi system breaking, transferring the electron density and the negative charge to the oxygen at the top of the structure, which is where I've written it in the intermediate. The task in the hydrolysis reaction is to break the carbon-oxygen bond and liberate the alcohol. This bond is now ready to break. There is a driving force. It's a heteroatom with lone pairs. And it's an anion this time, a more powerful driving force. So in these conditions, we can liberate the RO prime group without needing to activate that. So there's the push from the anionic pair of electrons in the adjacent oxygen atom and there's the breaking of the carbon-oxygen bond to generate the result from that mechanistic step. Glance at that result and check the charges. We have an anionic intermediate in the center of the slide, and now we have a neutral structure, the associated form of the carboxylic acid, which won't last long in base, and we have an anion. Let's just check about the energetics of this. We have a relatively reactive nucleophile as I flagged it up to you. Its power comes from being an oxygen-centered anion. That's an okay place to put a negative charge, but I'm also telling you it's more reactive than, for example, a water molecule. So at that reactivity scale, we're looking at localized anion on an oxygen heteroatom. Here in this intermediate, we have a localized anion, and top right on the slide, after the carbon bond to the OR prime group has broken, we have a localized anion on an oxygen heteroatom. They're all pretty much similar in energy. There is no great mountain to climb in terms of energy in this mechanism. Now for the driving force for this reaction and the explanation why, in base, it's only the hydrolysis process and not ester formation that occurs. And of course, it's on the right-hand side of the slide where you can see why that comes about. There we have a structure. It could be the OR prime group, which is the leaving group from the previous step. Or if we've got an excess of hydroxide ions, which is likely, this could just as well be a hydroxide ion. So either is right. Both things are going to happen. But in this example, we can see that this oxygen anion can deprotonate the carboxylic acid. It forms an oxygen-hydrogen bond. It completes the alcohol. That's balancing up the equation for the ester hydrolysis. And it's transferring the negative sign on this incoming reagent. Follow the arrow Swiss, transferring them to the lower oxygen in that structure which is where it's written in the resulting structure. This anion is spread across the two oxygen atoms and that both oxygen atoms contribute, and in fact contribute equally, but crucially both oxygen atoms contribute to the stabilization of charge. So compared to the other examples at the top of the slide, this carboxylic acid anion is very substantially more stabilized because of the delocalization of charge and the involvement of more heteroatoms in the charge stabilization process. So much so that this final step is effectively irreversible. This is an example now of a reversible series of steps, an equilibrium system, which is driven 
in one direction only. And in this particular case, the driving force for that control comes from the stabilization of charge at the end of the process. 